Understanding what the name of Baal is in prophecy is actually so simple if you just don't despise prophecy. And part of loving God with all of your heart, soul, mind and strength is obeying him. It's keeping his commandments, but it's also not despising his testimony. His testimonies is his prophecies. What's the testimony of Yeshua? The spirit of prophecy. So it goes like this. God writes down all of these things. To warn us, especially in the latter days. Don't be deceived as well. The apostles told us that all of the prophets from Samuel to Malachi were prophesying of the latter days. So for anyone that says that, oh, most of the, the prophets have been fulfilled. We're just getting started. Most of the prophets are talking about the fifth and sixth seal and onwards. But it's talking about the birth pangs in the latter days and then the sixth seal opening and America being destroyed. That's huge. That's a big blunder that the church have missed that. But you know why they've missed it? Because they couldn't receive the spirit of prophecy because they wouldn't obey. Because they've received he that has come in his own name. That's Jesus Christ. And when people say, oh, when the Messiah says in John 5, 42, 43, I know you, you have not the love of God in you. First blunder, the love of God is that you keep his commandments. And you can't love God if you don't then love your neighbor. So it's keeping the commandments and teaching others to keep the to keep the command the commandments. So in John five, when he says, "I know that you don't have the love of God in you, because you've re- you you you, I come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. Another will come in His own name, in Him you shall receive." All the Christians are like, "Oh, it's just talking about authority. It's not a literal name. Like His name doesn't matter." We can call him Jesus. It just It's the same as Yeshua. Jesus is not Yeshua. It's Joshua. They translated the book of Joshua okay. It's not the book of Jesus. It's Joshua. It doesn't have rem- the same meaning at all. They've made up his name. They've gave him a different name. Because he already came in a different authority. You already decided that you didn't have to keep the Ten Commandments. So you're actually partially right. So he actually, you didn't accept the Messiah's authority. You didn't accept and believe in the Messiah of Deuteronomy 18, who was coming to teach the Ten Commandments. He was coming to teach the love of God. That's why he's saying to you, modern day Pharisees and their proselytes, Christian, the Christian church, Catholic whole church, Christian, the Christian church as well. The Protestant Reformation is just the harlots from the great hall. He's saying to you, I know you that you don't keep the Ten Commandments. Because I'm coming Yah's authority that told me to come and teach the Ten Commandments. To teach you the love of God. And you receive me not. That's why you can't see that his name is not Jesus. The root is the authority. You're right. But because you won't accept his actual authority. If you kept the Ten Commandments in faith. That simple truth would be revealed to you. Because it's the spirit of prophecy that even does that. The spirit of truth. Can the Antichrist spirit of error can hide such simple truths from you. But the spirit of truth loves all truths, even the simplest truths. Another good one is always the Messiah was cut off in the middle of the week. That's what Daniel told us. He was cut off in the middle of the week and he rose on the Sabbath. Because in Matthew 28, 1, he's already gone by the dawn of Sunday. He's already risen. He was cut off on Wednesday, rose on the Sabbath. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. So that's three days and three whole nights in the heart of the earth, like the prophecy says. But the Christian church says, no, he died on Friday, rose on Sunday. In what world is that three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? In what world is that? They've accepted some weird Jewish tradition and put away the scriptures that says three days and nights in the heart of the earth. Not just that the whole process touched a day. That's the traditions of men. It's the thing the Messiah hates. So if you just kept the Ten Commandments, you would start to understand prophecy because you would get the spirit of prophecy. So in prophecy, in the latter days, it's always the context of the latter days. The end days, the whole church is going to be used in the name of Baal. What church claims to be the God's people that have the Bible, that claim... To love God, the God of the Bible, and is literally using the name Baal. What name are they using? 
It is simple, stupid. Hosea 2. God is going to take the church, those ignorant in the church, at the sixth seal. He's going to preserve a remnant from the church that didn't ever get to hear the truth from the servant Jacob. He's going to take them into the wilderness for the second exodus. Why, why don't you know about the second exodus? Why is your pastor not teaching you about the second exodus that happens at tribulation? It's a different harvest to the great tribulation. They don't know this because they don't keep the, comm they don't keep the commandments. They don't have the spirit of prophecy. They went to cemetery school and they just have these few sermons that they all each take turns at preaching. They're lying to you. They're tickling your ears. And that's also in prophecy. Paul even said this, and he's quoting Isaiah 30. Um, Hosea 2, he's going to take the whole church into the wilderness and take the names of Balaam out of her mouth. What name? This is the latter days. It's the second exodus. It's, it's great tribulation. That is the church we're seeing now. What name are they using? Come on, put two and two together. It's not the Messiah's name. And the reason why it's blaspheming God's name is because he came in his father's name. Yeshua means Yah saves. Jesus doesn't. So if you want to be like, it's not a literal name. We can call him Jesus if, if, we, if we want to. It doesn't matter. It's the, same, it's the same name. For one, it's not the same name. But two, you're right. It is the authority thing that is, for, comes first and foremost. But you're still despising that. You say, what, what do you think the love of God is? That he's saying, I know you Pharisees, you don't have the love of God in you. Do you think it's just, oh, they don't have mushy gushy feelings towards God. They weren't keeping the Ten Commandments. He said, I know you don't keep the Ten, the Ten Commandments because if you were, you would receive me as the son of God. But they didn't see him. And you've missed the Messiah as well, Christian church, because you're twice the children of hell as the Pharisees even were, which is why you need to be sharply rebuked. Because you're going around telling fables, we can do, we're delivered to do these abominations like Christmas and Easter. We can call him Jesus. You're all, you're all over prophecy. The end is church is going to say we're delivered to do Christmas and Easter. The blood of the lamb allows us to do pagan abominations rooted in child sacrifice. The blood of the lamb allows us to call him a name that is not accurate. It's just stupid. It's stupidity. The prophecies of Baal, Jeremiah 23, woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. At the end of that, he's saying, you are saying the burden of the Lord. That's saved by unmerited favor. We can't do anything. It's the Lord's burden. It's the Lord's burden. He says, never say that. And the Messiah quotes it in Matthew 12 and says, if you say that on judgment day, you will have an everlasting reproach on you. You're, you're, you're going to be separated from him forever. Take heed. So in Jeremiah 23, 27, the prophets prophesy falsely in the prophesying in the name of Baal. In the latter days, you will consider this perfectly. In the latter days. What are the pastors, the prophets, is the teachers? Are you okay, baby? Yeah. Yeah. The yeah, the prophets in the latter days are prophesying in the name of Baal and the prophets are the teachers. Anyone teaching the word of God, anyone claim it because prophesying is basically taking the dark speech and interpreting it and just teaching it, claiming you know what the book's saying to people who are weaker in the faith. The pastors are supposed to know what the book's saying and they don't. So they're leading silly women like you astray. Silly women laden with sins, with sins. <laughs> Um, yeah, Hosea 2, about the second exodus, she's still going to have the name of Baal in her mouth at the second exodus. These people didn't get to hear the truth. Jacob, the first fruits, second exodus being second fruits, great tribulation being a third fruit kind of thing. Jacob, his servant, is the first fruit and he takes the name of Baal out of his mouth beforehand. Because Paul tells you in Romans 10, when he quotes Isaiah 52, in the latter days, it's the watchman that's going to be preaching the refreshing of the, the Ten Commandments, the Holy Covenant, the refreshing, the gospel, the good tidings. They're all the same thing. It's the same idiom. And they're going to be declaring the name of the Lord. And there you go. Oh, my goodness. The people that say, oh, the name of Baal is Lord because Lord capitalized is hide in the name of Jehovah. I mean, in a way, yeah, they've still like capitalized Lord and put it over Jehovah. But the name Yah and Jehovah is still in the King James. It's not actually that hidden. But also, that's not even the point. 
That's just, that's you just still in error. Being presumptuous over what the name of Baal is. Think about the prophecies. And these are the same idiots that say, oh, you can call him Adonai. It's the same title. What you can't say Lord, you can't say God, but you can say Adonai in Elohim. Self-righteousness, don't listen to them. Anyone in the Christian church that's just waking up to this, God is more mad at them than you, trust you me, because he's trying to wake them up to go and wake you up, but they wouldn't come and get you. So they're stumbling like blind mice, like the name of Baal is Lord. No, it isn't. It's a title. He is Lord of Lords, King of Kings, talking about the Messiah. The Lord, the Jehovah is the Lord. There's even bits in prophecy, well, in the prophets, where it says, Jehovah, our God, Jehovah, our Lord. <laughs> it's like, it'll be the Lord, capitalized, our God. So it's still giving him a title. It's just Jehovah, our God. But I mean, like, if you have the spirit of truth, you're going to, God's going to show you that his name is Yah. And he came, his son came in his name. Anyway, I'm just kind of rambling now, but the name of Baal is Jesus Christ, Jesus Christos, because it's not even remotely the Messiah's name. Call him Joshua if you want to use the English name. I don't care. He doesn't care either, as long as it's right. But the point is, if you just kept the Ten Commandments, you would see how simple this is, that it's not his name. But you did away with the Ten Commandments as, as well as the sacrificial law when you were only supposed to get rid of the sacrificial law and see that he came to perform the mercy and give the spirit of truth to those who kept the Ten Commandments.